to the actual presentation. Like I said, there will be you know, some expected uh, questions coming in your exam. Uh, that's that's important to cover. But then you know the actual you know scope mm -hmm. of the problem with NTM is is important you know to understand. So we'll go over the new recommendations as they came out two years ago. Are we recording? Yes, everything is okay. okay. Just click on the screen, maybe don't worry. So, yes, just click on it. Yeah. Okay, Karim, we'll start with you. This is a question regarding diagnosis or NTM. Dr. Bakoman would not be considered an option to diagnose NTM pulmonary disease in symptomatic patients with a CT shown. What do you see on the CT pictures? What is showing? Some uh, brandias. It is not yours, right? There is not yours. There is a little bit of bronchitis yeah. on the right side, but there, there is yeah. not yours bilaterally yeah. defined. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they go to the question itself. Uh, multiple concerns. Uh, Multiple concerns. Multiple concerns. Multiple concerns. Multiple concerns. Multiple Plant biopsy with adrenal mix inflammation and sputum culture was the core mag uh, complex. So not be continued. And this is a tricky question. No. And, uh, and I think there have to be some, you know, changes made on the guidelines. But you know, going with the guidelines as of 2020, this is the question. You know, would be. You need two cultures. Because they didn't mention the numbers, so it's positive BCR. If one, I mean, you have have two at least. For so you have positive culture on yeah. BAL. Yeah, that's one. That's that would be sufficient, that. right? Yes. Or if you have it on washing. Yep. Now, if you get a long biopsy, and that happens often, you know, we do biopsies, they get read as, you know, showing a granulomatous with a caseating, non caseating granulomatous inflammation. Mm -hmm. But that alone, even when you have imaging abnormalities, is not sufficient to, to diagnose non NTM. It has to be along with a positive sputum culture or in you know, a bronchial washing. Mm -hmm. Now, as of 2020, you know, the positive PCR for MAC is not among, you know, the diagnostic criteria and we'll go over the diagnostic criteria. So if you get this question again, being tricky, you know, the most correct answer will be number two. Now, if you get one sputum positive, does not, does not qualify. All right, Yunus. And that's yeah. another question about diagnosis. Yeah. Which of the following confirms the diagnosis of anything in a patient with pulmonary symptoms and activities on chest cardiogram? Options of lung biopsy for abnormal inflammation, green blood nodularity, observed on CT blood work positive, greater than one in sperm culture of the same situation. Confirms will be four. Okay. So NTM should be three things. There should be symptoms. I will mm -hmm. talk about that. There should be imaging findings, and there will be culture for confirmation. Right. right. Your granulomatous inflammation, like I said, alone is not sufficient. Imaging, you know, findings not sufficient because it can be caused by another variety of reasons. You know, the blood work is typically not not positive, though it might be. Like in patients who are profoundly, you know, immunocompromised, you know, in this stage, HIV, AIDS, you might get, you know, positive blood culture. But if you have more than one sputum, you know, two sputums or more positive, with the right clinical setup, you know, having symptoms and imaging abnormalities, that will confirm your uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. What about BAL samples? Like yeah, BAL one one sample is enough. Again, you have to take it along with imaging findings and with the symptoms. You know, to qualify as a disease. All right, Kate, you want to look for the next one? Me? Yeah. Uh, microbiology lab calls to inform me that the patient comes in AFB smear is positive, but the DNA probe is negative for MTB complex. I don't know which of the following would be most appropriate next step in your diagnosis and management. So the AFB smear is positive, but the DNA probe is negative. Recommending 
Yes, that's with your patient that she most likely had that LB and multiple waiting with the third option. Um, Okay, very good. Again, this is a common occurrence. You know, you get sputum sent. The lab will call you with positive, you know, smear on that patient. You don't necessarily have, you know, to overreact and put patient in isolation or start, you know, patient on treatment. You do need to repeat, you know, your sputum culture and, uh, you know, confirm what, what's there before you make further uh, decision. All right, Ramsha, this is uh, another testing related question. The sensitivity should be ordered to guide initial treatment of this patient with Mycobacterium avium. Um, with sensitivities. And that has changed from, you know, 2007 guidelines, you know, 2020 guidelines. They have stressed, you know, the importance of doing susceptibility testing for certain antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Which which ones? Uh, the article marks that we do. Um, so treatment is usually ethambutol, acetomycin, and rifabutin. Uh, right. One and four. So it's both amikacin and clarithromycin, right? Yeah, yeah the microlytes are the back backbone uh, treatment or the mainstay treatment for uh, NTM, but we don't give it alone, of course, because patients can develop resistance. Mm -hmm. But having resistant strains, you know, carries you know worse outcome. You know, the likelihood of treatment failure, of course, is is high. Amikacin susceptibility is done in certain patients, and we're going to talk about IV amikacin. We'll talk about the AL, Alice, you know, the uh, amicase and liposomal inhalation solution, what will be the indication. But the susceptibility is done for these two antibiotics, the clarithromycin and the amicase. Yeah, Abdurrahman. What's your name? Was the preferred HF therapy for patients shown the non cavitary nodular bronchiectetic macrolide sensitive disease? Is it from less and it can be told daily? That is from my it can be told the band and three times weekly. Is it from my it can be told the band and three times weekly? Is it from my it can be told the band and daily? Is it from my it can be told the band and daily? This is the issue that I'm going to tell you. Provide sensitive. Is it from my I believe it's uh, number four. So can be told daily. Okay, the new guidelines and there has been comparison between daily and three times a week, mm -hmm. you know, regimen in patients with the non cavitary you know, the fibronodular or bronchiectetic form, and they found that the efficacy is the same, you know, whether you do it three times a week, which is easier for the patients to use and less side effects or whether you do it daily. Now, macrolides works, you know, clarithromycin and azithromycin are equally effective, but there is more side effects you know, intolerance to clarithromycin. So it, the answer would be three times a week with the triple regimen. You don't use monotherapy. You don't use, you know, two agents. It has to be at least three medications. And in uh, this case, it will be the azithromycin, it can be a total And azithromycin three times is given once a day. Yeah. And uh, clarithromycin has twice been given it twice a day. Exactly. So and the drug a, drug interactions is more are more with the, with the clarithromycin. So this is just to make it easier. Right. <clears throat> All right, uh, Hamza. Which, which regimen would be the preferred initial therapy before the patient shown with macrolide sensitive disease? First of all, what does the CT and the right, what, is the question? Yeah. This is how it dictates the treatment. Yeah. Is it a the, so diffuse the, nodular or the veterinary? The, the chest x ray showed maybe a uh, lift up or loop, maybe cavity there. Yeah, okay. And, and then the CT scan confirmed. Confirm, the right. Okay, cavitary lesion. Cavitary lesion, macrolide sensitive. So most likely daily. Okay. Uh, so as it from my. So, I would so first it becomes with, daily when you have cavity, yeah. the treatment becomes daily. Okay. And number two. Well, let's include one and three. Excellent. Very good. Yes. And as it reminds me, and refambicin daily. 
And then so what's the difference between two and four? This is a question. Because yeah, you, are, you, are, you sure. are between two and four. Yes. And, and actually, three, three, is the, three, 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 three is still, three is still <laughs> there, too. Yeah, yeah. But, there's initial treatments, not, not maintenance there. Yeah. So, so the so oh, it, initial treatment. So you'd use the three agents at least. You oh, use it yeah, daily. But then you have to use an amino glycoside for oh, two to three months. Yeah, for initial, for initial, therapy. Right, for initial yeah. therapy. So that would be num number three, use amikacin once a day. All right, Mahmoud. How long should the treatment be continued? I think it should be 12 months after negative culture. Right, so you have to achieve yeah. negative cultures and you have to go, you know, 12 months beyond that. So this can go on for, you know, 18 months, two years, two you know, years. the treatment is very lengthy. That's why when we talk about whether you decide to treat or not to treat, you have to take that in consideration because not everyone who's diagnosed with NTM it will it will be treated or, you know, so requires to be three, treated. right? Or one mm -hmm. culture negative or one? I think. Yeah, one, 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 one. You need the conversion. Yeah. So one, one one negative. All right. Uh, three negative uh, to. No, you don't. No, no, no. You, you do. Just one? Yeah, you do. One is done. You do sequential. We'll talk about that. You do sequential cultures, but one is negative. OK. Uh, They're immune to this one. Okay. Which of the following is not a risk factor for NKM, pre existing lung disease, pure immunosuppression, non gender, Caucasian? Um, so, A, yes, uh, C, yes, uh, E, yes, um, between B and D, really. Um, me? Females, right? Females, females yeah. more than males, yeah. And so, what, what does the gear gear? Of the channel with reflux, mm -hmm. they do, they are prone to some kind of specific kind of non TB. Anybody knows what? Chilon. 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 Yeah. So this is uh, something which yeah. it's, it is a good association. But and GRD is very common and you have you know, to yeah, see you don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, the next one. Um, every one to two months. Good. So you have to follow once you start your patients on therapy. Mm -hmm. Usually, in every one to two months, you do follow up cultures. You don't wait till you finish your treatment, and or you don't do it too soon. You know, like like weekly. All right, Yunus. Uh, Which of the following statement is most consistent with current treatment recommendations for COVID Lung disease is associated with a performance since surgery should be considered immediately after that. It's that like Arbitrary mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> lung disease can cause lung destruction in young individuals with a COPD. Arbitrary lung disease should be treated with pain and development of weight capacity. Arbitrary mark lung disease is not progressive, so taking the weight and the approach is appropriate. He is not bad. Is not right. Um, sometimes they they do surgeries immediately. No, not for me. We talk about indication first. Yeah, we talk about the indication. So cavitary disease, you have to take it very serious, right? And we will talk about indications to treat or just to follow, you know, watchful monitoring. Uh, but when patients have cavitary disease and they can progress. Even in the young patients with normal so lung to start with, they can yeah they can develop uh, destructive changes. So the waiting wait and see doesn't apply to these patients. Okay, I'm sure. So which of the following patients with initiating treatment rather than what for waiting be most appropriate? Smear negative with culture positive, um, increase in CRP, smear positive, and or presence of cavitary disease. Patient experiencing increased fatigue with imaging is stable. As you know, you know, positive and or presence of cavity disease. See? So you don't you don't watch on these patients, right? You, you treat, right? Yeah. You know, positive smear, you know, indicates high burden of the uh, infection. You know, cavity, the same thing, these patients progress, you know, the likelihood. If even a treatment failure is high, so you have to go aggressive with it with the treatment of these patients. Fatigue alone is not the indication. You know, actually, when I prepared this uh, talk, I thought 
A will be the uh, correct answer, but uh, B is the correct answer. Just you know, increasing C-reactive protein alone is not enough, you know, to justify treatment. I will talk about you know which patients are at high risk for disease progression. So there are certain measures. Yeah, you don't have to wait. So no, you treat. Yeah, 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 treat, yeah. yeah. yeah you treat so daily and you treat. An yeah. is treatable. And yeah. uh, smear positive means, as Dr. Zaid said, right. you have high burden to the point that our yeah. new technicians can still see right. it, you know. Yeah. So this question was about when to treat, not what will be. Right. Yeah. When do you just go ahead and start treating? Treat. Yeah. Right. So uh, why isn't the answer sphere positive and the cavity disease? Why is CRP not? Oh, and or, okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you go back to the question, the, the first question, that the treatment one? The oh, this one? Yes. Yeah, so would this would be about initiating treatment rather than watchful waiting. Yeah, so if you have AFB positive smear. Yeah, without yeah. No, without yeah, yeah that, no that would be the, sorry, sorry, that would be the correct answer, right? I think yeah, C, 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 yeah, C, 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 C would be the correct answer. OK, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see, see. And the next next question also will em emphasize that. So. OK, Abdurrahman. Uh, which of the following patient characteristics would favor treatment initiation rather than watchful waiting for MTM lung disease, AFP smear positive, cavitary lung disease, low BMI? Um, the only one that I'm not sure about is low BMI, but for sure is A and B. Yeah. So it, it, all of them. It is, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Low BMI is a reason, you know, to consider a treatment, but so positivity of smear and, of course, cavitary, you know, changes are, are a strong indication for a treatment. All of, all, all, all of them. Actually, it's because it's and B to, is to, to, make, to make sure, uh, actually, what I think. Yeah, all the above, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all the above. The so smear, but treat. C, C maybe above. has. You don't yeah. treat unless patient symptomatic or have. Which one? Or the AFP smear positive? No, no, the positive smear indicates high burden of the infection and you treat. Okay. Again, I'll go over that. And this is different in the new uh, guidelines from 2007. Now, yeah. maybe the low BMI is tricky. It, I think better just to formulate the question right, it should be failure to thrive. Not no, no, low but BMI. It, it's, it's listed actually yeah. in the but, guidelines, uh, low BMI, female yeah. gender, yeah, has yeah, you know yeah, an yeah, indication yeah. and high risk yes, for yeah, disease they, they are they are high risk of right, population, but we know that they are less likely to tolerate the management that you're treatment right, you're than right, others. That's right. the problem. But know? they are the one who's so, likely to progress. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Next one. Fifty-five year old obese female comes to your clinic with MAC lung disease involving mild bronchiectasis in the mid lower lung zone. She has been on oral treatment for nine months and has been culture negative for MAC for the past seven months. But she continued to cough. She is using airway clearance three times a week, which is the next best step. Pump airway clearance. Consider an alternative diagnosis such as GERD, stop MAC meds, prescribe ICS. So she has been on treatment for nine months and has been culture negative for past seven months. So you still treat like for 12 months after negative culture. Yeah. So we have five months more to go. So, yeah, so stop, stop MAC medicine is out. See. About uh, inhaled ICS. Inhaled ICS, uh, that will, in, will, will increase risk of infection. Right. Out. All right. Um, she has a bronchitis. What do you think about airway clearance? Part I mean, of the I, treatment, right? The part of the I, treatment. I mean, yeah. she's on the right treatment. She yeah. achieved cal, mm -hmm. uh, smear or culture mm -hmm. negativity so what do you for think? seven months. So consider another kill right, for her right. cough. Which is... You keep an open mind for other etiologies mm -hmm. for her so, cough, uh, mm -hmm. you know, beyond her uh, N NTM. 67-year-old woman has been on therapy for MAC lung disease with three times weekly oral therapy with azithromycin, ifampiatol, and rifampin for six months. She remains culture positive despite excellent adherence to this regimen. Her ID doctor recommend adding uh, Alice and taking the oral regimen daily. Two weeks later, she complained of severe nausea, which is the best next step. Uh, stop Alice, return oral meds to take it and be line. Please stop Alice from Watson. Uh, Alice, you just started, I think, and you need it for the resistance, basically. Yeah. 
return to our mess. Uh, no. It doesn't I cause nausea. Yeah. I mean, Alice is not. I think they take that time before night. Take three times a week. Remember, we just go back to the one. Tolerance is instead easy. of no treatment. Yeah, yeah tolerance yeah. is easier for three times a week regimen instead oh. of uh, daily regimen. So the treatment, like I said, is a protracted. There is a lot of side effects. Sometimes the side effects can be actually worse than the disease itself. So you really have to be selective about which patient to initiate therapy on, and we'll talk about what uh, group of patients you know will qualify for a treatment. Yes, another question about Alice. Karim? What's the best response uh, for a patient being treated with ALS uh, who has voice-related symptoms based on the experience of participants in the converse study for ALS? Your voice symptom may become this other son after using for more than six to eight weeks. Your voice symptoms are concerning and we should stop the medication. Your voice symptoms are permanent. Your voice symptoms are nothing. Don't worry about and follow up is not necessary. I think it's a yeah, okay. Yeah. So Alice is most common side effects or symptoms, dysphonia, cough, and dyspnea. And this happens and peaks at about you know six weeks and then beyond two months, the side effects start, you know, becoming less. So it tends, you know, to lessen the severity of the symptoms after two months of from therapy. Okay, we'll do the last question. Kate? Right. Um, <clears throat> a 65-year-old female referred for further evaluation of non tuberculosis mycobacterium lung disease. Um, presented last year with persistent cough and mild daily sputum production of fatigue, intermittent night sweats and weight loss. Imaging revealed diffuse bronchiectasis worse in the right middle lobe than lingula with nodular densities in the right middle lobe, lingula, and Basal, but what is BLO? Low, 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 and so what she has, any anyone beyond six months and still with positive culture is considered refractory in the end. So what do you do too? Right. Um, yeah. Now it's an indication to start the ALIS. Right. Start ALIS. So this again, the ALIS is different from the IV uh, ME case and IV ME case. And for cavitary yeah, disease, better. we started early on two yeah. months, and this one will be an add on when patients are on triple therapy and they are still culture positive. After six months, how do we go back to the other presentation? Yeah, I don't. There we go. She just minimized this one. Oh, there uh, we it's go. not the very bottom. Oh, yeah, you can yeah. Full screen at the very yeah. bottom. Yeah, right. To move, does this one move here? The one at the top? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, so the new guidelines came two years ago, came you know, from different uh, organizations, ATS, ERS, IDSA, so you'll find the same article that was published in uh, each organization uh, journal. And there were some similarities between the these uh, most you know, recent guidelines and the one from 2007, but there were some differences which I will uh, point out. So as far as NTM, and again, you know, this is what we usually will be dealing with. You know, the tuber, you know, mycobacterial TB is rare here. So that's most of the isolates that you'll find in sputum or when you do bronch that will turn to be, you know, not non ATM. It's any mycobacteria, and there is like 200 species of mycobacterium, you know, genus. But any mycobacterium that does not cause TB or leprosy is called non tuberculous mycobacteria. And there will be different terminology. So you might hear, you know, the term atypical mycobacteria, or you might hear the term MOTT, which is mycobacteria other than TB or environmental mycobacteria. So these are ubiquitous in the environment, you know, soil, water, uh, Ooh, <clears throat> the plumbing system, hospitals, you know, dental office. 
you know, the organism is really hard to treat and to dis oh, disinfect yeah. because it forms biofilm. So it's really hiding, you know, from the antibiotics reaching there or disinfectants yeah. reaching there. And it tends to resist high temperatures and low temperature. Now, the types of infection for us, of course, is the lung infection, which is the most common infection this organism causes, but they can cause other types of infection, soft tissue infections, you know, bone infections, osteomyelitis, lymphadenitis. You can have disseminated disease in uh, patients with AIDS. You know, you, you can get positive blood cultures on these. Uh, but again, you know, for the most common infection is uh, pulmonary and most of the morbidity, mortality, Relates to pulmonary infection. Now, out of these almost 200 species, you know, for us, the most common ones are grouped into slow growers and rapidly growing organism. The slow growers, which is the most common organism we encounter, is the MAC group. So this is Mycobacterium avium, and then you have the intracellulary, and the third one is Mycobacterium chimera which is the patient that we saw at the VA. Yeah. So these patients who have had cabbage, you know, the organism can be contaminating the uh, bypass circuit, and there had been reports of patients post-cabbage developing even your know, disseminated infections, even, you know, endocarditis or, you know, pulmonary infection coming from uh, contamination. But that's the big group, the MAC group, which has these three organisms. Then the next common one for the lungs among the slow growing is uh, cancicide, then uh, Xenobi, and then Malamonsi, which is the least frequent one. But among the rapid growing ones is the Mycobacterium abscissus, and this is the most difficult one to treat. So and there is a through a three uh, species among this complex, and this tends to have, you know, uh, resistance, especially to microlide. And the last one was Fortuitum, which is related, you know, to water and, you know, humidity. So. But so again, the growing are more affiliated with the antibiotic resistance. Which one? The uh, rabbit. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, and yes, they are, and they are hard, hard, hard to treat and to get uh, negative cultures. The rabbit growers, uh, yeah. almost nobody starts yeah. treatment without antibiotic yeah. sensitivity yes. because you don't know what yeah. they're sensitive for, mm -hmm. and they have to be in like clofazim and other IV antibiotics in addition to the regular ones. It's very tough to, very, very tough. It is. It's five to six medications. Sometimes you start, end up starting with. Right. But it's uh, yeah, but luckily for us, it's about 70 yeah. 85 percent is caused by you know the MAC species, which is which tends to be easier you know to treat, but then cancer side also yeah, can yeah. cause uh lung disease. And the ones you need to know, you know, for sure to know is the MAC and the cancer side, right? You have to know this is a must, for right? Us. You will, the others are kind of yeah, either you will never see, or if you see it, it's going to yeah. be something with ID going to run the show. Yeah, the end. yeah. so again, uh, to emphasize the sensitivities that we get are just uh, it's for the for, yeah, for yeah. Abscesses. yeah. So the MAC again tops the list, then cancer side, then Zenobii, and the abscesses, and the Chilonii, which is less, less common. So that's the group of your NTM lung disease. Again, lungs is the most common site for infection. MAC is the most common group with the three species. And then you got the uh, abscesses, but the cancer side, Xenobi. Okay. So there's increasing prevalence of the infection, you know, here in the US, but uh, worldwide. And like I said, the disease causes, you know, mortality, it causes, you know, morbidity for uh, these patients. Now we're seeing more of these cases now, or we're diagnosing more. It could be because we have better diagnostic uh, tools, but there is real increase, you know, in the incidence and the number of infections. And there's more awareness. That's why, you know, you see more cases reported right now and you hear about the infection more often than we used to. And uh, that's the prevalence estimate here in the US. It varies, you know, from state to state. But there has been, if you look over time here, and this is Medicare uh, statistics, over 10 years if not, from 97 to 2007, there was a steady increase in I the cases of in, it's in, in, recognition yeah. rather than anything else. Yeah, I think recognition yeah. and that better diagnosis. Yes, yes. yes. So I think I mean, before it was yeah. underdiagnosed, now we are, you know, finding, you know, the right, right numbers for, for the cases. Now, the diagnosis, of course, you know, the AFP smears, some patients can be smear positive. Others can not be this uh, positive smear is an indication for a treatment. You know, it correlates with you know higher uh, risk of progression and higher 
uh, infectious uh, burden, you know, the culture methods can be done with the uh, traditional way with the solid medium or the liquid medium, which can take four to six weeks. And uh, that's that's the problem, you know, waiting, you know, to get your identification. Now there is a newer ways of diagnosis, and that relates to one of the earlier question, because there is a, a DNA probes with the nuclear acid amplification, so you can get your uh, diagnosis within hours. Yeah. So that gives you quicker diagnosis. Again, this is not included in the guidelines. When you look at the guidelines, positive DNA probe is not among the diagnostic criteria, but I think it should be added to what we already have as far as culture being a prerequisite for making diagnosis. Because you can avoid these patients, sometimes they get put you know, in isolation or they could be you know, subjected to therapies that they really don't, don't yeah. need. The most, the most important for the DNA probe, it's definitely if you have non-TB, it's good. But if you have acid first, positive, you want to know it's not TB. This is the first thing, everything else can wait. Because, like, you know, all what you need to see, just bring the word TB in the floor and everyone will, uh, you know? will be frightened. Yeah, it says, so just in your came back positive. Do we have to treat for cult waiting for culture for the sensitivity before we start the anti uh, medications? Or this can help? I, I, the I think if you have, you know, the symptoms, if you have the imaging, you can justify starting treatment. Right. Yeah. But the thing that you will justify starting treatment. Yeah. And we, if we don't have the the species exactly, if it's like AVM, abscesses, so no, actually how, the DNA, how... DNA probe can uh, can specify even this uh, subspecies. Muhammad, it will tell you which yeah, yeah. one. It yeah, will it tell, will you tell you a, you. is it TB or non-TB? B is it fast or slow grower? Number three, yeah. is it likely MAC or consistent or not? It doesn't tell you yeah, about sensitivity. Yeah, from the DNA. yeah, no, no <laughs> sensitivity, but this genus. Yeah. Or the species you can tell from the, the DNA probe. It gives you a probe. better idea about yeah. what you're looking at. You know, that's that's in the real world, not in yeah. Cabell Hospital. So, so my question is for like, which is like to help the fellow understand because yeah. we don't have we discussed Dr. Z uh, yesterday. Yeah, so we, don't, we don't have it here. Here, it will come back. The first one will come back saying it's non-tuberculous mycobacterium only. It will not say they will not do DNA, DNA gene or DNA. Uh, yeah. uh, to, Show you if it's avum or abscess or anything. So when you have that back saying it's non-tubercular mycobacterium tuberculosis, you still cannot start the treatment. Right. At least you take patients. If patients was in isolation, you take them I out of isolation. But unfortunately, you have to wait for the final identification and uh, you know to initiate therapy, and hopefully you know susceptibility testing if it's you know mac. Because in here, like I yesterday, I called the central lab. That it takes like a one week to ten days. To know if it's non tuberculous or tuberculous, that's first of all. This, this is, this and, is the best part. and then it will take another two weeks at least to know what is the species, which they can do it in only uh, um, one day, uh, one hour in the, in the real world, yes. not in Canada. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah so, unfortunately, I, what, what we have okay. here is not time. You know, that's it's, right. uh, you know, we don't. I think that it. was you, Kareem, is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the question. yeah. OK, so like I said, the disease cause, you know, symptoms could be systemic symptoms, could be respiratory symptoms, can be very debilitating for the patients. You know, studies looks at the outcome. Hospitalization is more frequent in patients with the NTM. So earlier diagnosis treatment might, you know, improve this uh, aspect of the problem. So the burden could be from the disease itself, could be from the treatment. You know, both mortality and morbidity are correlating with that. But like I said, you know, the treatment, especially in elderly patients with comorbidities, can be really very tasking on the patients. That's why you have to be selective, you know, on which patient to treat and, you know, for how long and what agents. And some patients might have, you know, contraindications, someone with, you know, bad kidneys, you know, stage three, stage four, you don't want to put them on aminoglycosides. So you might be limited with what agents to use based on patients' uh, uh, characteristics. Now, the risk factors and that, you know, led to one of the questions earlier. So it could be something in the lungs, pulmonary disease, whether bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis, you know, cold worker pneumoconiosis, asthma, COBD. So all of these are predisposing uh, for the NTM, higher incidence of TM. It could be some immunocompromising conditions for various reasons, you know, HIV or hematologic or steroid therapy. 
it could be medications that patients are prescribed and there is more use of, uh, you know, immunomodulatory medications, you know, TNF agents, patients with uh, collagen vascular disease, they can be placed on these uh, medications. I'm not sure about inhaled steroid that listed here. So I have to verify that uh, systemic steroids definitely, mm -hmm. you know, patients post transplant, of course, are at higher risk. And then lastly, there's some phenotypic features. And again, this was one of the questions, you know, the usually ladies, females, you know, tall, thin, who have, you know, it's, uh, skeletal abnormalities like scoliosis, Victus excavatum is called Lady Winterman. Mm -hmm. So these patients are at especially high risk of having uh, NTM and they tend to have uh, bronchiectasis. But uh, as far as gender, females are at higher risk than males and race, Caucasians, they don't list here Asians, but uh, patients of Asian uh, Asian descent mm -hmm. are uh, at higher risk. Why scoliosis with the excavatum? Because they have poor reserve, poor lung? It could be, but there's, you know, association, there's even some it's cardiac uh, abnormalities, right? There's aortic regurgitation in these okay. patients. They tend to have higher incidence of uh, bronchiectasis usually in the middle lobe or in the lingula. And the, on the top of that one. Right. Right. And they have poor cuff mechanics. Yeah. So this one, it's yeah, it might have to be with the mechanical. You know, did you see the movie, the the the, the theater where well, Lady Lady Windermere is sitting? She's an old, fifty-five yeah. year old lady, young, thin, sitting there. Yeah. You see, she's breast suppressing her cough. <laughs> so that's the phonotype. Yeah. That's the classic. This that's why I call it the Lady Windermere. Yes, it's, it's one of the uh, with this. I, I think it's Shakespeare. One of Shakespeare's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Novels, yeah. Okay, so 2020 ATS, ERS, all, you know, the bodies, organizations came up with these uh, recommendations. As far as diagnosis, not much change from before, but still you have to meet clinical, radiologic, and microbiologic criteria to diagnose uh, NTM lung disease. And the clinical could be either systemic symptoms, you know, fever, malaise, weight loss, others, or it could be pulmonary symptoms, but they can be very non-specific, and this is what caused delay in the diagnosis. Patients can come to you with cough or other symptoms that you might attribute to something else. So things can go on months or even years before patients are brought, you know, to have uh, definitive diagnosis. And then besides the clinical, of course, you have to have the imaging, and we showed some example, but there are different phenotypes. So patients can have fibronodular or fibrocavitary disease. Patients can have bronchiectasis. And each one will, of course, have you know different uh, method uh, to treat depending on the findings. And then, lastly, we have the microbiologic criteria, which again, as of now, requires two or more sputums with cultures positive. You need only one uh, BAL or washing, or if you do biopsy, you need uh, you know showing granuloma along with the granulomatous inflammation. You have to have positive uh, culture, so it has to, have to be both. So diagnosis didn't change from 2007. Uh, again, the reasons for delay, if you depend on the chest X-ray, you can miss actually, because the X-ray may not show the profusion and you know the extent and the characteristic of the abnormal you know, nodules, cavities, bronchiectasis, you see it much better on uh, CT chest imaging. The other thing, if you don't order culture, you will miss the diagnosis. So if you go with only smear, or if you just order, you know, gram stain, you're not going, you know, to find your your diagnosis. So you really need to have sputum culture, and if it comes, you know, one positive, of course, you have to repeat it again and confirm that it's still positive. This is why you yeah. guys need to do. I mean, in all patients, at least for what I do, all patients I do BAL on. You send, you send it. Yeah. You send AFPs, yeah. It's cost, cost, cost effective, yeah. It's very Regardless cost effective. Yeah. If you think yeah. about it or not, because you don't know what you're going to find, especially in cases which are not straightforward. Just do it, get it negative once, and you're done instead of uh, keeping this all you're times later about, on. Yeah, yeah, thinking right. about it. Yeah. Right. So, the decision to treat, like I said, we have to factor several considerations. It might be, you know, the disease itself. You know, what's showing on the X-ray, whether there is, you know, evidence of progression of uh, nodules or cavities, uh, what symptoms patients are having. The smear positivity is important, very important consideration, you know, in, uh, whether to treat or not. 
and then you have to look at what type of uh, species you you are isolating and whether patients are immunocompromised or you know have had you know transplant and that would be you know a stronger reason to consider a treatment but then you have to consider also the host factor itself These patients like i said could be at risk for adverse reaction intolerance to treatment for various reasons and then you might have to adjust your treatment accordingly or might maybe even to take you know one of the recommended agents because patients simply cannot take the medication or may have been tried and cause debilitating side effects then you have you know to compromise and use maybe less than even optimal therapy so you don't always have to treat again like i said you know you consider the factors that we've discussed but if you do your treatment goes 12 months at least beyond first negative uh, sputum culture and so the treatment on average takes you know beyond one year you know usually 18 to 24 months it's, it's very important yeah. to show that in yeah. cancer you can get up to 100 right. if you do it right yeah it's sensitive more treatable and more uh, likely to achieve and culture it's, negativity it's more aggressive, actually this is a good news i mean it, right. it doesn't take long to get the cancer right. to yeah. diagnose them because they're not hiding the others will hide the abscesses is, is good yeah luck. that's the one good which luck. is very hard to treat and you see the rates are very low mac you, you know give them and that's it. yeah 55 or above <laughs> okay so whether you treat or you know watch the patients you know the natural history is un unpredictable but patients tends to progress and you know there's only few patients who will go negative on their own so you know, to wait for the disease you know to be self cured it doesn't really happen. And then you have to weigh your decision, you know, and you look at benefits and risk and make, you know, the decision to treat or not. Again, remember the positive smears, cavitation. Now there is strong recommendation to treat these patients. Okay, so there are risk factors associated with the progression. Again, we have some questions related to that. Though the incidence is more in females, males tends to have, you know, worse or more likelihood of progression. Younger patients, and here the low body mass index is uh, among, you know, the host factors associated with the progression. And then, of course, the imaging, if you have cavities, definitely if you have, you know, widespread disease, more likely to progress. And the patients having, you know, high inflammatory biomarkers, you know, hypoalbuminemia and uh, high microbial load as reflected by positive smear and of course you know this type of the infection that you have will decide whether to treat or just watch and monitor yeah, just one take home uh, message here in any disease not for this when that disease presents in the less likely group it's got, it's almost always stronger okay make sense mm -hmm. So if female more prone than to non TB than male, male will do worse. Like rheumatoid arthritis related lung disease, it's less than okay. male, but if it, if they get it, it's worse. Mm -hmm. So this is just almost valid for across everything. Be the opposite, yeah. yeah. The prevalence versus the disease uh, yeah. severity will be the opposite the gender. Okay. Again, it's a clinical decision like it, anything else in medicine. You know whether to treat or not on one side here the factors the symptoms microbiology imaging but on the other side patient you know likelihood of having toxicity comorbidities and then you reach to your decision whether to treat or just to observe the patient okay so treatment here you know for mac we said that uh, you it's recommended that you do susceptibility for amikacin and for macrolide. Okay, and refractory disease is defined by six months of treatment is still with positive culture, and this is where you consider adding liposomal uh, amikacin. And for cavitary disease, you use IV either amikacin or streptomycin up front along with daily regimen and that goes for usually two to three months. And for the inhalational uh, amicacin, it's an add-on therapy, so it's not an initial therapy after uh, six months of treatment with uh, a triple regimen. Yeah, what's the good about streptomycin, if there is anything good in it? It can, be given, it can be given IM. Yeah. 
A lot of short patients would be yeah. having a yeah. I mean, at, at, every day? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 yeah, yeah, they, 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 when you treat Brusilla, you yeah, have yeah. them for two yeah. weeks every day, I am injection. Yeah. Simple and easy. This is how it goes. Give them some uh, yeah. lidocaine and then inject them. And you just go. But at least, at least you don't need to be an right. IV or right. hospitalized for that. Yeah, yeah, you need an access for the amicus. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so it's just summary. Nodular bronchiectitic, MAC, lung disease, your medications here, three times a week, 12 months after negative culture. So azithromycin is what we like to use again once a day instead of twice a day. You know, easier on the stomach, less drug-drug interactions. You can use either rifambin or rifabutin, one of the two. And that's the cavitary disease. We said it will be daily in two, three times a week. And then you get the amino glycoside for two to three months at the beginning. Now there is additional medications, alternative medications. We don't have it here. I think this is in special centers like in Denver, Colorado. They have uh, NTM, you know, big program, and they get referral from all the country. And this is where if you have a patient, you think that they might require surgery, which we'll discuss. They usually have to go, you know, for such a centers. But there is second line therapy. One of them is the clofazamine. You have to watch your uh, acuity interval. There's a newer one called bidequiline. And then uh, linezolid has been used and the fluoroquinolones has been used. Of course, linezolid, like uh, Hamza said, you have to watch for toxicity. There could be neurologic toxicity, could be, you know, thrombocytopenia. It could be, you know, drug drug interactions with do, the SSRIs. Do we add them on the other three or? Yeah, there will be an, there will be an add. Okay. Yeah, there will be an add with therapy. Okay. So again, take the cavitary disease serious. Use, you know, your amino glycoside. One of the two, and of course, patients have renal disease. You have to be careful, or you may not be able to use it. So the, here, there could be some role for the, you know, the inhalation and liposomal, in, instead of the injectable. I think we covered this part. We said the uh, Alice. You know, the most common side effects is the dysphonia. Usually, you know, it uh, gets better beyond uh, six to eight weeks, but cough and dyspnea can happen from uh, that agent and there are studies about the clofazamine which is an add-on and it has other side effects besides the q2 prolongation it can cause discoloration and tanning of the skin and dryness of the skin so instead of going to hawaii to get tanning yeah you get, <laughs> get it for, <laughs> you get it for free so this uh, susceptibility testing again mac we do it for macrolide and okay. amicacin and this is how it's uh, defined for the amicacin. Less than 16 is considered sensitive for the uh, Alice, less than 64, and that's for clarithromycin, less than 8. Yeah, I think that uh, will be the same, but that tells you about the resistance. If there is resistance, you know, the treatment failure likelihood is high. So it's important, you know, to have, uh, you know, knowledge about susceptibility when you start your uh, therapy. You have to monitor your patient during therapy. We said you do culture, serial cultures, usually once every one uh, to two months. Patients are still positive with the guideline-based therapy, defined refractory disease. Then you add your uh, inhalational uh, liposomal amicacin. And then, of course, you watch your patients when they go on these medications, the azithromycin, for any cardiac toxicity, especially if they are on other cardiac medications, you know, antiarrhythmic, you know, there's high likelihood of uh, developing, you know, worse in QT prolongation and precipitating arrhythmia. Then it, it, it has also some autotoxicity, especially in older patients. They can develop problems from it. Refractory, you you add medication or uh, you add it right. What yeah. about you do daily regimen instead of every other day? Or you usually just add. You 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 add it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. If it's cavitar, you start with with daily. daily. Oh, yeah. You you start with daily. And then ethambutol, of course, the visual uh, toxicity, but it can have also uh, some uh, bone marrow or you know CBC and hepatic toxicity. And refambutol, the same thing. You can have bone marrow. 
or hepatic toxicity. Mm -hmm. So these patients have to be, you know, followed closely and get, you know, serial, now, uh, serial there, evaluation. Something very important. Yeah. There is no INH in the story here. There's a the big, yes. big difference yes. between it and TB. Right. And the yeah, the, yeah, the backbone is the macrolide. Ethambiotol is very strong companion to the macrolide, so it should be part of the regimen, but the macrolide is the main mainstay. But be, be careful not to use it as a monotherapy because you know you will induce yes. resistance. You know, sometimes the patient think that they have bronchitis, they get the place on, you know, azithromycin, clarithromycin, or fluoroquinolones, and this can, you know, drive, you know, the, the species to become resistant if it wasn't resistant to start yeah. with. But yeah, you're right, yeah, the INH is not part of yeah. the NTM. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the main main therapy for the tuberculous mycobacteria. Okay, how do you monitor your efficacy? Of course, you know, with the patient's clinical response, and then, uh, like we said, it's important to follow with your cultures every one to two months, and then you can do imaging maybe every six months to see how is, you know, the disease uh, course going. One time it is negative, we don't have to repeat the culture again. Right, yeah. And then the regimen here is uh, summarized you know, with three drugs, and then 12 months, and then if it's six months still positive, it will be refractory and you add the ALIS. And this is the common side effects for uh, microlysis, primarily, you know, GI, but then you have autotoxicity, cardiac toxicity, and ethambiotol is ocular toxicity primarily, and rifambian and rifabucin is hepatotoxicity, but then bone marrow. And then, of course, aminoglycoside, both uh, renal and vestibular toxicity. And for ALIS, the ALIS is the dysphonia. What's, what's the, the most common? Uh, sign or symptom or whatever the patient says which makes makes you know that he does take his family scene. Yeah. 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 Now for the cancer sign we said you can get a good you know cure rate to negative cultures. Treatment is it 12 months, you know it tends to be you know more uh, susceptible to treatment so within four months many patients can be you know culture uh, negative. And that's the recommendations for treatment. So somewhat similar to the MAC, you know, with the three medications regimen. And if there is resistance, there could be a role here in the question mark about the INH, but the fluoroquinolones can be, you know, used in, the, in these patients. And uh, let's see. I'm going to so these are just to so right. get rid of. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just try to get towards the end of the presentation. So there's other aspects of care that you really have to pay attention to besides, you know, the antibiotics, you know, treatment of underlying condition if it's applicable or possible, but then the airway clearance. So just, you know, regular bronchodilators, patients have bad bronchiectasis, you have to do, you know, either, you know, chest percussion manual, or you can use, you know, the vest uh, devices to improve uh, mucociliary clearance. You have to treat. GERD, which is a big risk factors in these patients, you know, and then uh, nutritional support is important. And if there's any environmental exposure to minimize that. Uh, surgery, th there was a question. So first, the disease has to be localized. You can't, you know, go in and take multiple lobes from the lungs. Uh, patient has been treated and they have failed to achieve uh, negative cultures. Of course, patients should be medically fit. Uh, to uh, go for the procedure and the patients have resistant microlide you know, disease. Again, this is usually done, you know, in a special uh, few centers. OK, decreasing the time of diagnosis. Again, like I said, the patients goes on, you know, with non-specific symptoms, delaying their diagnosis. If you are not getting, you know, sputum cultures, you can miss it. So you really have to have very high index of suspicion, make sure to submit multiple samples, and uh, then you know ask for culture spe specifically because if you ask for AFP smear, they will tell you it's negative, and then the rest is forgotten. So to, for summary, the NTM is a chronic and progressive disease. Like I said, there is high mortality, morbidity. Uh, treatment should be individualized. And uh, you really have to sort out which patients is the right candidate based on their uh, several factors, you know, presentations, comorbidities, diagnosis, and should be at shared decision making. 
we did go over the treatment here, you know, triple therapy and the frequency, whether daily or three times a week has to do whether it's cavitary or not. And then the refractory where we have the Alice added to such therapy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a few things here to 